I see a young child in there that was abused. Many people just see an angry person, an angry old man or an angry woman. Now the reason I've come here today is to remind you that in December, uh, a prominent MP handed a dossier to Parliament and also to the UK Police Service. That document contained the names of 24 suspected paedophiles within our own political parties that are lurking inside Parliament. That's 24 suspected paedophiles. The dossier was handed to the police and it was handed to Parliament. We're now in April, I mean, up, that's four months, four months down the line. There's not been one single arrest of the accused politicians. Not one. So if you think about it, you see your news, every now and then you get a celebrity tip bit thrown at you. Dave Leaf, Travis, Stuart Hall, uh, Rolf Harris. They've all been thrown at you. They've all been arrested, bailed, charged and convicted within a year. Maybe two at the outside. They're celebrities. That happens to them. But politicians don't get arrested. Politicians and lords, as you can, as you can see, the Lord, Lord Janna, he was the one that uh, has only just been told that CPS aren't going to be charging him. They're not charging him because he's got dementia and he's a bit old. Well, there's a list of 40 paedophiles in my pocket, just members of society, if you can lower yourself to call them that. They were all convicted of child sex attacks, uh, but they used dementia as a mitigating circumstance, and they used being elderly. Well, that didn't rush in the courts. They got convicted, they got jailed. So why is it that Lord Janna can have dementia and be elderly and not be convicted, not be charged. Uh, it's one law for them and one law for us. The fact is Lord Jana fits the criteria, but because he's very well connected, it's all been brushed under the carpet. Now I want to get back to this dossier. In four months there's not been one single arrest. There's 22, sorry, 24 suspected child abusers currently making policies for your country in Parliament. They've not been suspended, even though they're, they're, they're accused. Now, if those paedophiles, suspected paedophiles, worked in accessories over there, and someone took a list of them in and gave them to the bosses and the police, you could bet those 24 suspected child abusers would be suspended immediately and then they would be arrested to effect a prompt and thorough investigation. The idea of being arrested promptly is to do it so you can do a thorough and prompt investigation. You've got to be fair. Huh? But at the moment what we're seeing is that the politicians aren't being arrested. Now this is not the police's fault. Believe it or not, this is not their fault. They can't arrest the politicians. And the reason they can't is back in 2005, a very sly European law was passed. That European Act of Parliament made, it, uh, made politicians and MPs, any Euro MPs, immune, get this, immune like it's a disease, immune from questioning and legal proceedings in a country. So they are immune from being questioned. If you can't question someone, you can't investigate them. If you can't investigate them, you can't charge them. Now, I don't know where you come from, but in my country, we have one law for everybody. It must be seen to be applied fairly and equally to all, not just the people on the ground. So far, we've got peers evading arrest. We've got politicians evading arrest. We've got bankers who are guilty of raping all the money out of our bank accounts, not being arrested. None of them get arrested. In fact, we get arrested if we, put a, if we drop a cigarette on the floor as we're walking around town. You get a little council official come up to try and give you a £60 fine. Never anywhere in, in my entire life have I found anywhere that 
that investigates the dropping of a cigarette on the floor quicker than it investigates the rape, murder and torture of children. At the moment, we have the opportunity to change this. But we have to do it together. The first thing we need to do is ask, why is there a law protecting our politicians from any kind of arrest, questioning and prosecution? That law needs to go. Yeah, One law for all, or no law at all. The next thing we need to do is look at why have these suspected paedophiles not been suspended from Parliament? You'd think that would be the very first thing David Cameron or the Chief of Police would do the moment they had the dossier. They would suspend those accused and then they would be arrested and investigated. And if found with enough evidence, they will be charged and prosecuted in a court of law. But it's not happening. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a lot of noise in London on the 27th of June outside of, Par uh, outside of Downing Street because we're going to have a little word with David Cameron. Now, that on that day, we're hoping there will be thousands upon thousands of ordinary members of the public, just like you, just like me, out there saying this is unacceptable in our country today. Not on my watch. So, let's just say, why are we hitting David Cameron so hard with this on the 27th of June? David Cameron was passed a list on this morning today programme, the, the guys that get that morning telly that aren't still asleep, had Richard, uh, Philip Schofield and his, and his sidekick at the time, and they handed, they ambushed Cameron, they handed him a list live on television of 16, at that time it was just 16 suspected paedophiles, but they handed him a list on prime time television, live, and they said, will you take this list? Will you act on this list? And David Cameron said, well, I want to be careful that we don't turn this into a witch hunt for gays. Right, now just let that sink in for a second. They don't want to turn it into a witch hunt for gays. That's the biggest bum steer I've ever heard in my life. Like, it's got absolutely nothing to do with homosexuals. I've got many homosexual friends. They're not child rapists. The, the, the people that are doing it are the people that your Prime Minister... David Cameron is apologising for. They're apologising for these people. They're saying it's not, it's okay. They've done marvels for society. Did you see what they said about Leon Britton? Leon Britton never got to trial either. Like, he had to be, he had to be finished off first. Not allowed. 130, 130 pound fine for dropping a cigarette on the floor, his son. 130 pound on the spot fine. Yeah? But he can't arrest child rapists that hide in our parliament. You've got to love it. But let me explain, like, you've got to understand that it's not really the police's fault. I've looked in their eyes and they don't like it. They don't like the fact that this is happening and their hands are tied. And the reason their hands are tied is because of this tiny piece of legislation that was passed in 2005. It was a European Act that said if one of our politicians sends our soldiers over to another country and they happen to kill innocent civilians in a crossfire, that politician cannot be held accountable or responsible for murder. Seems legit. Almost can get away with that. But, 15 years down the line, 10 years down the line, they're not using the law like it was written. They've turned it round. Now, politicians are immune from questioning and legal proceedings for any crime, if it's historical. There are only two crimes that it doesn't apply to. One of those crimes is hate crime, but it must be current. It can't be a historical hate crime. And the other one is driving offences, but it's got to be current, not historical. So you've got these politicians that now are effectively above our law. Our law, as in it's our law. We employed them. We came up with the idea of policing by consent and we said yes, we like that idea. You work for us and you police for us. 
Yeah? That's a good idea, it's called policing by consent. But that's slowly being eroded away, yeah? It's now, they're working for the corporations more than they're working for us. And sometimes the police forget that, that without our consent, they have nothing. But more importantly, if the police forces of the UK are now working for the banks, the paedophile politicians, and the corrupt corporations, they can no longer be called a public service. They can no longer be called the British public's police force. Because now we don't have one. They work for the corporations, the banks, and the pedo politicians. Right, hold on, hold on. Yeah. So you're claiming they're all politicians and pedos? No, only the ones that have been accused so far. Right. But we need to get them into court. If, if we're going to find the answer... How can we find them guilty? How can we find them... How can we find them guilty if we can't get them into court? How can we find them guilty? How can we find them guilty if we don't put them in court? If we are incapable of putting them in a court of law, then guilt cannot be established and it cannot be disproved. But the bottom line is we have politicians out there now that are still making policies in our parliament that should be suspended for alleged sex abuse crimes against children. That's what's happening. Yeah? It's, it's been going on for decades. Like we've only just really woken up to it. We've only just found that out. But what we have got to do now is we've got to make it clear as a, member, as, as a British public that this is unacceptable on our watch. Most of you have got kids, right? Or you know people who've got kids. Most of you have got a disabled or elderly neighbour. Not doing too well either, are they, with the Atos? Most of you know someone who's homeless. In fact, let's face it, we're all down there. And those up there are way above the law. Yeah? And that has to stop. The only way we're going to do that is to force the UK Police Service to go back to common law. We swear its oath to the people and protect the people. Because if they can't protect our children now, they sure as hell ain't protecting us. So we have one shot at this. On, Ju on June the 27th, we are going to be outside Parlo uh, Downing Street and we are going to have some very keynote speakers, some very influential people. And people are coming out. You've heard the cries about Jana. All the people coming out saying, it's, a, it's disgusting that he has not been charged. It's disgusting. It, it's, not, it's not acceptable that members of the public can go through the system, but politicians and peers can't. They're protected. Well, that protection's got to stop, and it's got to stop now. So what I'm hoping you'll do is you'll clear your diaries for the 27th of June, get on a mega bus, come to Downing Street. There will be lots of us there, and our statement will be quite clear. No more child rape, torture and murder within the House of Commons and accountability and justice that is seen to be done. It's time officers like these turned around and walked into those gates with us and then arrested the suspects. If it had been anywhere else, any other shop, they'd have been suspended. But because it's Parliament, it's alright. Well, not on my watch, it's not. So hopefully you'll join us on 27th of June. Book a day off work. Skip it if you have to. Five pound, ten pound megabucks coach. Come to London and be part of one united voice, unity in the community. We have to say no to this and we have to say no way are you just having one law for you and one law for us. It's one law for everybody or no law at all. And if we don't have a public police service anymore because they work for the corporations, we better damn well start thinking about forming our own. Because the British public needs a police force, but it needs one that's going to look after it. Thank you.